This is Mark from Live Well CPAP and Medical Supply. Um, and today I'm going to go over the ResMed AirSense 10 Auto CPAP. Um, basically, uh, what we'll do is we're going to start out with the cleaning. Um, and then we'll go into the functionality of the machine and, and go over that a little bit for you. Um, first thing we'll take a look at is your humidifier as far as uh, cleaning and, and utilization goes. So to take your humidifier out, you have to grab both kind of the bottom and the top, and you'll almost see it kind of sandwich on the side here. Um, as you do that, you'll be able to pull it out. To change this, um, you'll lift up here on the tab. But to open that up, that's going to pop out there. Um, to fill it up, and you want to fill this up every night. Typically, you'll go through most of that water in a night, um, but you'll fill it up to the max line. One thing you'll notice on this particular machine is it's uh, the way it's set from max to min. It, it uses uh, a lot more water. Or there's a lot more water towards the bottom half. So if it seems like the first half you use very fast, that's kind of normal. It's just kind of the shape of the humidifier. Um, but you want to make sure and use distilled water in here. Regular water will crust this up. Uh, it'll leave a kind of an orange film on there and, and uh, also turns into kind of a white crust. Now, if you don't have access to distilled water, I, you can use regular water in it for a night or two. When you have access to the distilled water, again, fill it about halfway full up with uh, a white vinegar, um, the rest of the way full of water, let it soak in there. Um, wash it out very well, and then you're ready to use it again. A um, couple things on here. You do want to wash this out once a week. This baffle will come off right here. We'll pull it off there. Um, when you do wash it, wash it with warm, soapy water. Uh, the manufacturer says use a mild detergent, usually like a liquid dish soap. Try and stay away from any um, antibacterial soap because you will... Uh, kind of ruin this silicone piece right there and it is important to keep that for seal and and to get the air circulating like it should humidifier chamber just closes in right there of course it just says distilled water on the top make sure when you push this in make sure it goes all the way in that there's no gap there um, if there is a gap it will sound like it's leaking at you so if that's the case give it a good push it'll snap in and, and sound like it's sealed again um, as far as your tube goes, your tube is just going to connect in the back. Your tube is heated. Um, if you squeeze uh, both of these pieces right here, it's just going to pop out. You'll notice your electrical connection is right there. The reason why they have a heated tube on here is the, the heated tubing gets more humidity up into your mask. It's a little bit more effective. Um, and to, to put it on here, you'll notice that little electrical tab is going to click into the top there it's going to swivel side to side. Um, I would recommend washing this tube out once a week, warm soapy water. This side of the tube fits very well over a, a bathroom sink or a faucet. Just put a squeeze of dish soap down there. Usually what I'll do is I'll wiggle mine on there, turn the faucet on, have the water push through, um, and then just let it air dry. You can put it on a, uh, a uh, towel rack to dry, or I, I have glass around my shower that I'll put on there. And then that will just, again, snap into place there. But again, wash it out once a week. Wash your humidifier chamber once a week. You'll probably need to fill it daily. Check it in and see. Now, you do have a filter in here. This filter, if you lift right here or kind of pull out this way, it's going to pop open. I always send people home with the hypoallergenic filters. And the reason for that is, number one, it tends to filter what you're breathing better, but it also tends to keep more junk out of your machine. Um, what I have seen is a lot of times um, the, the other filters that will come from the manufacturer let a lot through. You'll get dust that, that builds up in here and a lot of times it will build up in your machine. It can cause issues down the road. Um, typically we'll send you home with a few extras of these. Check this every two weeks. You'll notice it will get dust spots kind of in the shape of your grate. Um, if it's starting to look gross, chuck it, put a new one in there. This seats right on the on the door there, and then it's going to snap into place. Um, that's pretty much it for cleaning. You'll also get uh, just kind of a, a written out piece of paper that will go over your daily, weekly, monthly, and we'll also talk about your mask. But we've most likely already talked about you cleaning your mask and 
and changing your, your mask supplies out. Um, as far as the machine functionality goes, once turns it on, and uh, so it's a toggle button. Once it's going to turn on, once it's going to turn it off, you'll see your pressure. Right now, I've got it. It's just set to the default, uh, the default pressure four to twenty. You'll see your ramp time in the bottom left hand corner here, um, and then you'll notice your your humidity settings. Right now, it's set to auto. Um, as you can tell, after about thirty seconds, the machine is going to to go completely black, so it's not so bright in the room. So I'm going to periodically kind of wake it up as we go along here. Um, but this is kind of what you're going to see here. Now, when you do turn it off in the morning, it's going to shut off and you'll see how many hours you used it. Um, your respiratory events per hour. This is kind of a quick snapshot of what went on the previous night. Um, the events per hour, eventually we want to see less than a 5.0, but sometimes it takes a little bit of change for from your doctor um, to get those uh, less than five. So if you see that a little bit higher than five to start out, um, don't worry too much about that. We'll get there. Uh, you'll notice your mask seal is, is either a green smiley or a red frowny, very commercialized. Now, if we scroll down, though, you'll notice... Uh, it's kind of, you, we'll get into more some, some deeper detail here, but if you'll notice, uh, if I go to my error, right there, this is going to tell you, there's a little app you can get for this machine, and it's going to, uh, it's commercialized again, but it's kind of guides you through your usage on your machine. Um, should we hit stop on it? Are still okay, or is it glared still? Um, no, I got it. Got it? Keep, okay. Pick up where you um, The next one down, uh, so again, it's under the, uh, it's for Apple and Android, the, the My Air app from ResMed. This is the more detailed clinical data that you can see in here. You don't have to know this, but this is, if you're interested, it's there for you. You'll notice on the uh, period of time, you can change it from anywhere from one day clear to a year, and it'll give you an average. I usually leave that on a month. Um, again, you don't have to know this, but it's, it is there uh, for you to see. This will also be transmitting, um, through the built-in cellular modem on here. And that will, um, that will go to, to me and it will also, I'll, I'll, I can tag your doctor on it and it will go to your doctor. So when you go in to see your doctor to follow up with them, they'll have that data as well. If I scroll down, the first little bit is your usage data. You've got your days used, your days for more than four hours, your average usage. The reason why they have four hours plus on there is because most insurances uh, are looking for a time uh, in a 90-day window. They're looking for a 30-day run of where you're using your machine for more than four hours, 21 out of the 30 days. So that's kind of why they have that there. Um, your average usage, and then your used hours. If we scroll down past that, you'll have your pressure. Um, so this pressure is what they call the 95th percentile pressure. It's what pressure gets rid of most of your respiratory events. Um, it's kind of a point of reference for your doctor. So they'll know, you know how high they need to go on pressures or, or low on pressures to, to get, your, get rid of your respiratory events. Leak. So up top in that snapshot, that daily snapshot we had, we had a smiley face or a frowny face, but this gives us a, a liter per minute leak. Um, typically, we want to see that less than 24 liters per minute. Um, AHI, that's the events per hour. And then it kind of breaks them down into what types of respiratory events. There's three types of events. There's uh, hypopneas, apneas, and central apneas. And it kind of will break that down. Uh, so you know what you're looking at. If you ever get lost in this menu, now this will automatically pop up when you hit stop in the morning, but if you're ever lost in this menu, you can just press the home screen and it gets you back. Um, most of your settings are going to be in, under the my options uh, setting. You'll notice to, and you've kind of seen me as I, as I twist the dial, it will navigate through the menus. I click on it to select it. Um, I'm going to go into the my options menu. Um, you'll notice on here you've got your ramp time. Um, right now it's just defaulted to 10 minutes. What ramp is, is ramp is to help you. It's more for people on a fixed pressure. If you're on an auto set pressure right now, this is a set from a 4 to 20. If you're on that auto set pressure, 
you're staying at four until it senses that you need more. So for people on a, a wide variation of auto set or a, a wide differential of auto set, it's not going to help you a whole lot. Um, but for people on a fixed pressure or people that are starting out on a higher minimum pressure, it can be helpful. And you can set that to how long it takes to go from your minimum pressure or from your ramp pressure to your uh, minimum pressure on there. Climate control, you'll notice you've got a climate control and tube temperature, and both of these from the manufacturer set to auto. If you sleep in a very cool room, uh, typically less than 65 degrees, I found in, in kind of my experience, is where you'll start to get condensation in the tubing if these aren't set to auto. Um, auto will cut a lot of the humidity out, but the advantage of auto is it keeps condensation out of your tubing. So it won't gurgle and pop at you in the night. It kind of sounds like you're sleeping next to like a coffee maker, if that's the case. So if you're getting enough humidity on auto, that's fantastic. It's a great way to you. Uh, it's a great way to to start out and to use it. But if you do feel like you need more humidity, you can change that. So you'll notice as I twist the dial again, it's going to go through, and I can highlight the the part that I want to change. I click on it. Um, if I change to manual, you'll notice now I've got two settings. I've got your tube temp, which you saw previous to, uh, was set to auto, and then your humidity level. Um, now your humidity level is how hot this heating plate's going to get. I'm going to kind of scroll down to it and click on it. Um, it's anywhere from a zero, meaning it's off, to an eight. Eight means it's going as hot as it can. It's going to produce the most humidity it can. Um, Usually I start, if, if somebody's on a, a uh, wants to use manual, typically I will start them off at about a six. And then how, what your tube temperature is, is essentially just to keep condensation out of the tubing at that point. Um, so if you're getting condensation in the tubing, it's gurgling, popping at you. You want to increase your tube temperature on it um, and or decrease your humidity settings. Um, if you sleep where it's very cool, again, like room, uh, I do have some patients who will sleep with the window open in the winter. If that's the case, um, you probably want to do auto on both of those, but you won't get a lot of humidity. It's It kind of depends on humidity, uh, depends a lot on temperature. The warmer the temperature is, the more humidity you can get. Um, but you do get more humidity set to the uh, manual settings. Um, next part is the smart start with smart start. What, what will happen is when you breathe into the machine in theory, and I say in theory, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, it's kind of quirky, but in theory, when you breathe into the machine, the, uh, it will start up on you. Um, sometimes I have it to where it starts. Sometimes it won't uh, start. So a lot of times I'll just kind of leave this off. And all it means is you've just got to press the start and stop button. If you're interested in using that, just like everything else, click on it, turn it on, and in theory, again, when you breathe into the to the mask, it should start up. Um, the mask type is um, right now it's set a, uh, defaulted to a nasal. If you're using a nasal, we want to change that. Uh, you know, leave it on a nasal there. If we're if you're on a mask that covers your nose and your mouth, you would just change it to a full face. Usually, I'll have that set to where it needs to be. Um, run mask fit. This can be extremely handy. Again, if you're, if you're on a wide range of auto set, if you're starting out at a five and let's say you're going up to a 15 at night at a five, it's really easy to get a good seal. But if that pressure goes up to 15 as you're sleeping because your airway is closing off, um, run mask fit. What it will do is it will give you a blast at your 95th percentile pressure. So you can snug that mask down. So usually what I'll tell people is for the first two weeks, do that run mask fit. And I'll kind of explain how that goes. So click on it and I'm covering the tube. So it's not quite so loud, but it'll, uh, you'll notice if it's leaking or not. Um, unless typically if you're a, a male with a beard, um, sometimes that beard, it, it's kind of hard to feel the leak there. So this is good for people with beards as well. Um, but it's going to tell you, it's going to give you a blast at your higher pressure so you can snug that down. It's going to tell you how well it's sealed up. You'll notice it will tell you frowny face if it's not if it's not sealed up. Most of the time you're going to feel if the mask is leaking or not. Once you're done with that, 
deselect it, and then you just hit your start button. So kind of going from uh, from a uh, a default screen here to to the mask fit function again. You want to click on my options, scroll down to mask fit, not not mask, but run mask fit. Click on it, snug your mask down, deselect it. You can also let it run for five minutes if you're comfortable with that, and then we'll drop into your lower pressures and, and go from there after five minutes. But usually deselect there and then just start your therapy again. Um, and I'll go back to the home screen there. Um, that's run mask fit. Run warm up is something you can use, but you don't have to. What it does is it starts warming the humidifier before you turn your pressure on. The advantage of that is you're starting the evaporation process. So the first little bit of your therapy is going to be a lot more humidified. Um, <clears throat> most people don't use this function because they just want to put their mask on and hit start. But it is there if you're dealing with any sinus issues. Um, any allergies, anything that, that you want to open your sinuses up, more humidity is going to help open your sinuses up. Turn that back on there. So that is an option. Um, you'll notice on here, um, if I do run warm up, there's a little uh, heated water looking icon at the top. Also, when I turn it off in the morning, you'll see a little snowflake flashing and there is a little bit of air that blows through the tube. What this is, is it's going through a cool down function. It blows any excess condensation that's built up in the humidifier chamber and the tubing out. So it will, even though the screen is dark, you'll feel a little bit of air running through it for about 20 minutes in the morning. And again, I'll go back to the, to the default and you'll feel that in the warm up and the cool down, that little bit of air pumping through the tube. Um, airplane mode. I would always leave this airplane mode off. Uh, it's one of the things I wish the company would say modem on or off. So it's got that cellular modem that's calling out every day. Um, typically, uh, if you turn your airplane mode on, what it's going to do is it's like your cell phone. It makes it so the modem won't call out and won't receive calls um, or won't receive pressure changes. So I'd always leave that off. The one time I can think where that might be handy <clears throat> is if you are in the hospital, you're using your own CPAP, but you're in an area that they don't want cell phone usage because this does have a cell phone. The modem is a, basically a cellular modem. Um, and in that case, you would just turn it on. Um, but when you got out, you want to turn that off. And that's so I can see kind of what's going on in your machine if there are any issues. And also your doctor can see that. We'll have uh, your doctor tagged on the modem so they can see that. Um, last piece in here about, you've got software versions, serial numbers, run hours, a lot of stuff you're probably not too terribly interested in, um, but it is there for you to see if you're interested. Um, after, so after this video is over, we'll also go over a little bit. I'll, I'll probably go through and any questions, any concerns that you've had um, while watching this and in any of the settings that we have. This is the, again, the AirSense 10 from ResMed. And I am uh, Mark from Live Well CPAP. Thank you.